So just get your Bible. And I want you to hold your Bible up with me. And it goes like this. This is my Bible. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Like a sharp two-edged sword, it is quick and alive. This is the Word of God. With this Word in my heart, I'm an unstoppable force. It is my compass and my road map and my guide until the end of time. Because the Word of God in me is what the earth is waiting for. Y'all ready? Let's go. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Nathaniel Davenport. I belong to Lighthouse for Jesus Ministries. And I love my ministry. There's a lot of things that go on. But in that, no matter what goes on, we can't let our situations dictate our discussion in our decision. If you understand what I'm saying. Meaning that, okay, think about this. Before anything happens, the discussion is always in your head. And a lot of time when we get things in our head, we sometimes go talk to other people. And then they get into our heads and then we let that discussion dictate our decision so in other words we can't let whatever situation that you're going through whether it's children wife church parents you can't let your decision be dictated by the discussion saying all that I thank God for this because I'm nervous I'm, I'm really nervous because there's a lot of times in our lives we let situations dictate the outcome of where we're supposed to be we let it could be any any small thing. We let it get in the way of our purpose in God. I'm saying, purpose. Are we purpose driven? Faith driven? Are we self driven? It's a whole. It's a whole. It's it's a wide range of things. What what is it? What part do you play? Where do you stand? Who's your daddy, God or Satan? Are you a bastard child? Ask yourself these questions. Because that helps dictate your decision with that discussion. Okay. What is purpose? Purpose. Something, something set up as an objective or end of an attempt intention, resolution. A subject under decision or an action in a course of execution on purpose. Is it intentional? Is your purpose intentional or is it not intentional? That's a big thing because we have a lot of people now they're saying they're, they're called and they have a purpose in God. So who have they been sitting down? What, what discussion let them lead to their decision? We have to ask ourselves that. Okay, I'm going to start off with this one. Genesis chapter 3 and the first verse. Now, Adam and Eve, that's the first things that happen. Now, we, we all know that the serpent beguiled Eve. He talked to her first. 
So where did it start? It started with the discussion. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Now, he, he asked her a question that he already knew the answer to. She knew the answer, but now she's wavering. She's wavering in, in this. God had already told her what to do, what they can and cannot do. Now, she's wavering in her decision. And we all know what happened. She ate her and Adam. And we can't, we can't let it just not be on her because he was there with her also. So, in that decision, he could have stopped it, but he let that same discussion dictate his decision because I'm pretty sure he heard the serpent talking to her. There, there's, he, was, he was there with her. So there wasn't, he wasn't somewhere else standing around. He wasn't, he was there with her. So he allowed that discussion to get in both of their, in their decision on the purpose that God gave. Now, consequences of that they had a purpose. Their purpose was to chill in the garden. Who wouldn't want to chill in the garden? Why would, why would they let someone come and dictate to them a decision that God had already made for them? There's many of us like that. We know where we're supposed to be, but we let situations dictate and pull us away from where God has placed us. True. I'm like, okay, situations, I'll, I'm going to use myself for an example. There's many times in life that I wanted to run. But was that God's purpose? There's a lot of people I talk to. A lot of them ask the question, is that God? I can't let situations dictate my decision. Even though you have to have that decision, you have to have that discussion in order to make your decision. Because now, weights and balances. Weights and balances. God, devil. God, devil. Hmm. Who you gonna go with? Because we have a lot of, we have a lot of situations. I like to use this. I'm gonna say this. And whoever gets offended, so be it. Lighthouse for Jesus. We are a ministry. We have, we're not perfect. No, we're not. We're far from perfect. No church is perfect. None. There's not one perfect church. If you is, you show me that church. I, I want to I find that perfect church. Because if they have that perfect church, that's where I want to be. But there is no perfect church. It's just like there are no perfect people. There's only one who's perfect, and that is he who is in heaven, and that's Jesus Christ. So, there's a lot of things that go on, and, and I, I understand, I understand that we let some situations dictate us leaving our ministry. But it's that of God. I understand that there's a situation that, that happens, yes. A lot of the situations we bring on ourselves. I'm going to be honest. We bring, those, we bring those situations on ourselves. Why? Because we let too many people get into our minds. And we start listening. Oh, it's better here. Oh, it's better there. Why? Do, why? Why? Why do we let that dictate our decisions when a lot of us know where we belong. No, it's not perfect here. No. Far from perfect. But me, myself, I know where I belong. There's nothing in hell, out of hell, going to hell, coming from hell that's going to move me from the foundation 
of God that rests in this house. I don't care what situation. There's many times I could have ran, but I stood in God and his purpose. No, I'm not perfect. But God's, God's will for my life is more important than any other thing, any other thing. Now, we know what happened with that. They got kicked out of the garden because of one situation. Now, the, the lavish life of kicking back, eating fruits off the tree, kicking back, just relaxing, no dying. Now, he got to work by the sweat of his brow. Now, was that decision worth it? Huh? Was it worth it? Was it worth Pleasure, chilling with God. God comes walking in the midst of the garden, talks to you daily. Why would you want to give that up? Why would you want to give that up? Now you have to work by the sweat of your brow, and now you're going to die. They lived long back in those days, though. They was like 106,000 years. All my, they were just living long. But still, he had to work by the sweat of his brow then. You went from relaxation Worshiping God to now you have to worship God still. But now you have other obligations now. You have tilling the land. Now you got you got to make sure you're not, you got to watch these animals now because now you got to watch your back because ain't no telling what's going to drop out on you now. You know? <laughs> Just all these situations happen from one, from one. When we let one thing in our minds, there's no telling how many other things come in with it. Are they all good? No. Are they all bad? No. But we have to understand in God what the decisions that he wants us to make. Because he's the only one. He's the dictator and author. He's the one who knows each and everything that we must do. And there's a, there's a lot of things I got, okay. There's a lot of things. We have to know. We have to know. Go to Ruth chapter 1 verse 6. I'm going to kind of skim through this though because it's kind of long. Okay. Now, we all know who Ruth was. We all know who Ruth was. I'm going to kind of paraphrase this chapter because it's long. Ruth, her, she was married to Naomi's son, her and her sister Opa. They died. Now, they live in Moab. Moab wasn't a good place. God called it his wash pot. So, a wash pot. Ugh. They were, that's where they lived. Okay. So now, Naomi is leaving. She's leaving. So now they're walking. She says she's going back home to go back with her people because she heard that they have bread and, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So now, as they're walking and leaving, she turns to Ruth and Oprah. And she says... I have no more kids. So why are y'all following me? I have no more sons for you to marry. And I'm, I'm getting kind of up in age. So, and if I do have a son, will y'all stay and wait till they're old enough to marry? Y'all, go back to your, go back to your people. Go back to your mother. Go back. Neither one of them, they stayed. They kept walking with them. So she turns to him again. Why are y'all coming? Y'all go back. So Oprah, she turns. She kisses Naomi on the cheek. And you never heard of her again. She turned back. She let that discussion of her situation dictate her decision. So now, and now we never heard of her ever again in the Bible. Never heard from her again. 
We don't know if she died, remarried, or what. We'll never know because the decision she made wiped her out of the rest of the book. On the other hand, Ruth said, and she tried everything. Ruth was just like, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. And everybody, Ruth said, Ruth told her, nope, I'm not going. Ruth said, and treat me not to leave thee or to return from the following after thee. For whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God shall be, your God shall be my God. Where thou diest, I will die. And, man, now, Ruth, now that's some, that's some deep stuff now. She could have way said, no, you know what? I'm going to go back to my gods. Because that's what she told them to do. She told them to go back to their gods. She told them, go back to your gods. Ruth said, no. I don't want to go back to my gods. I want to go with your God. And we all know the end of the story of Ruth. Ruth is remembered throughout the Bible. Why? Because her situation, she didn't let the discussion dictate her decision. Her mind was already made up that she was not going back to where she came from. She was moving forward in her life. There's many examples of people in the Bible who didn't let the discussion dictate their decision. We got, except there was one. There was one. Moses. Moses. We all know Moses was this great and meek man. But Moses let the murmuring and complaining of the children of Israel led him to give an ill-advised thing. And that cost him. That cost him. That one thing, no matter all the things that he did, great. Part in the Red Sea, the plagues, all of that. His consequence for doing that one thing, instead of smoting the rock, he smote the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And in that one thing, caused Moses to enter into the promised land. How many of us going to let murmuring and complaining dictate to us our decision in the kingdom of God? We can't let that dictate our... A lot of us going to bust hell wide open because we letting people dictate our decisions. We, we can't do that. We can't. As children of God, we have to understand that people are going to be people, and we all are not perfect. We all, we all say things sometimes that we regret. We all do it, all of us. But can you own your decision? Can you own it? When you make that mistake, can you say, yeah, that was me? Like those, let me say, those people from back in the day till now. Was it wise for a lot of us to walk away from this ministry? Was it wise? I may understand that a lot of us, our situations may be better per se. So we say. But what was those decisions? What is that decision going to do in the outcome of your eternity? Nobody's perfect. We got David. We all know David. Nathan came to David and asked David a question about a sheep and a man taking a sheep for himself. And David and Nathan asked him, what, 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 what shall we do to this man? David said, we should kill him. Nathan told David, you're that man. And we know what that was about. That was, that's when David had put, what's her name? Bathsheba's husband on the front line to kill him so he can have him. Wow. Wow. 
But he let the discussion, because it had to be, it was a discussion in his mind at first, because he saw on the, on the balcony bathing. So now in his mind, he's like, dog, woo I got to have him. So now it's in his mind. And he's discussing it with himself, because he's not, there's nobody else with him, because he's not going to go talk to nobody else about it. Why? Because he knew it wasn't of God. And a lot of times, we have those discussions in our minds, and a lot of times, we move, but it's not of God. Why? Because it's something that we want. It's not what God wants. It's something that we want. It's like, okay, even with Moses, with the rock, and missing out on going into the promised land. Pastor Donnie, I love my pastor. But a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of us, and I'm saying us, us, congregation, lighthouse, us, one of these days, because of how we act, we're going to cause him to give us a misadvised thing. Because why? Because a lot of the time, it's not, it's not for the best of the ministries that we're going to on is because it's something that we want. Has nothing to do with God. It's because it's what we want. And we go to him, put this stuff in his head, and then now he's in his head, now he's wavering. He's, he's not perfect. And Pastor Don, he will give you the sweat, the, the shirt off his back. And sometimes to make people happy, he'd be like, go. But is that God? And he'll tell you himself. He already know. So he's going to tell you, that's what you want. Go ahead, do it. You say, I, you already know. Why you come to me? And us as people, we have to stop doing that. When we already know that we already had that discussion about our decision. But we try to make it look good by going and talk to him just to save face when you really don't want to save face. You want to be gone, but you try to make it right, but it's still wrong. We have, okay, there's spiritual blindness, and there's an anointed dysfunction. And then there's a little bit of biblical manipulation that goes on. Wh wh which one are we? Is it the spiritual blindness? Is the anointing dysfunctional? Or do we use the Bible to manipulate people into what we want? Hmm? That's a, I'm, it's, it's, it's serious because we are in the last days. We have a pandemic going on, which honestly, and people can take it how they want, I think they kind of overblown it. Not saying it ain't, not, not saying corona ain't real. I'm not going to say it ain't real. But I'm going to ask everybody this question. It's flu season, right? How many people have you heard about the flu? Who, who had the flu? You ain't heard nothing about the flu. Everything is corona, 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 corona. People die. They died in a car accident. Corona killed them. We letting that discussion dictate our decisions in a lot of things. We letting it, we letting it dictate to us how we're going to live. Do we want to live afraid? No, the word of God said that he don't want us to live like that. He don't want us to be afraid. We can be safe, but not afraid. You can live safe without being in fear. There's only one he said you should fear, and that is him. Okay, now, we got Elijah. Everybody know Elijah, the great prophet Elijah. Elijah was ready to give it up because he thought everything was downhill, there was nobody left to worship God, and he was by himself. He had that discussion in his mind. 
ready to just sit in a cave and be nothing. He let that discussion in his mind dictate his decision until God came and told him, no, no, my son, there are many that stand for me. Now gird your loins up and go. And we all know what happened after that. He went and anointed Elisha. And we all know the ending of Elijah. He never knew death. He was caught up in a whirlwind. Ooh, what, 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 a, what a great ending. To never see death. Just to get me caught up. Ooh. Think about it now. Lord. None of us are perfect, though. It's this, this, I'm like, I, I be, I'm, I'm tired of hearing things about the ministry, the ministry, the ministry, the ministry. People letting the discussions about this ministry affect their decisions. No lighthouse. I'm gonna say it again. No, we are not perfect. We are striving for perfection. We got Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel did not care. He they told him the discussion was because these guys were after Daniel, and they knew Daniel prayed every day. So they went talk to the king. They had a whole discussion. They went, talk to the king. Oh, king, we need to make this decree that nobody's going to pray to no other God but you. Okay. Daniel said, nah, I'm not going to let that discussion affect my decision to worship God in the way I do every day. And at the end of that, we all know that they came, they saw Daniel, he said, okay, we're going to throw you in the lines then. Daniel never wavered. Never wavered. He said, oh, well, still not going to change my decision. I'm going to worship God. Throw him in the lines then. We all know what happened after that. He thought he was dead, but Daniel in the lines then kicking it. Lions probably all up on him, kicking it, purring. Come on, damn man, we sure is hungry, Daniel, but we can't eat you. Man, you got we got another one over here that's sitting right there. Man, we hung in. They ain't fed us in days. Man, well, every time we look like we want to go to you, there's another line that shows up, and we run, and we can't do it. And we always know which line is that, the line of the tribe of Judah, which is above all other lines. So in saying that, we know. And Daniel never wavered in his, in his decisions about what God wanted him to do. We got it. Some other guys. Sad rap Meshach, and I'm gonna say like to saying a bad Negro. We got them. They did not let all that stuff dictate their decision. All the discussion was we all hear all these instruments play, y'all gonna worship. Them boys said, nah, we ain't doing it. We not doing it. Old King gonna call him up again. He said, I'm going to give y'all one last chance. When y'all hear all this go on, the bells and the harps and all these other things, I'm going to give y'all one last chance, one last chance to bow down and worship. The boy said, nope, sorry. We're not going to let your threats dictate our decision. We serve God. We don't serve you. You know what happened with them. He did up the fire seven times. The people that threw him in there burned up while they was in there dancing. Nebuchadnezzar had to realize that their decision was not made when all this happened. They had already had that discussion from when they were reared up that they would never walk away from God. And they don't matter, no matter what happened, that they will stand in God. So it didn't matter. We have a lot of people that's like that. They stand for God for one second, but soon as some situations in their life come, they tuck tail and run. 
That's not what God wants. God can't use no coward soldiers like Pastor Nani say. You have to be able to stand and fight. You can't fight running. You can't fight backpedaling. He wants you to stand there. And then we got another instance with Joshua and the wall of Jericho. Now, you know these people. He had to hear these people. The, all the discussions going on, he making us walk around this wall. God ain't going to do this. He's li- I'm pretty sure he heard it. He's listening. But he did not let those discussions dictate the decision because God told him to walk around the wall. Fulfill what I told you to do, my son. And he did that. And we all know what happened. The walls fell down when he, when he finished what God told him to do. Are we going to finish what God told us to do? Or are we going to let our situations dictate it? We can't do that. We can't. Because these are the last days, and there's a lot of things going on. No, we're all not perfect, but we all know that God is real. Well, let me rephrase that. Some of us know that God is real because all of us don't. Because we have, we have a lot of people that go, that's, that's doing their own things. Everybody want a ministry. Everybody want a ministry. Everybody want a ministry. How does everybody want a ministry when they have not been set down and been taught? We got preachers everywhere. Everywhere. There's a some cities they got churches on every doggone corner. Why? Because people look at it like it's a limelight. Why? Because people have portrayed it that way. And that's not the true gospel of God. That is not. God's gospel is it's terrifying. It is terrifying. When you have to preach the true and unadulterated word. It ain't peaches and cream. It ain't all about blessings. It ain't about sex. It ain't about that. It ain't about getting a word from God every doggone time. Words gonna fall to the ground. We all sit, everybody wants a word. You let those discussions dictate your decisions. We all, don't don't get me wrong, ain't nothing like a good prophecy, but is it of God? Is it of God? Anybody can give you a word. The donkey spoke. The rooster crowed. Made Peter come back to his reality. When he heard the rooster crow. Because Peter had them forgot the discussion that he had with Jesus. Soon as everything hit the fan, Peter took up tail and ran and started cussing. Forgot who he was. But when he heard the cock crow, he came back to his senses. And we all know what happened with Peter. He had that great message on the day of Pentecost. Peter has, we all have our shortcomings, but are we going to let our shortcomings dictate our decisions? Y'all be blessed. (sighs) Yeah, okay. Lord God, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. I pray that everything that I said, Lord God, will fall on fallow ground, Lord God. That it would take and people would listen and understand that it's not about us, it's about God. All things that work for the good for those who love him. We as a people, Lord, have to start realizing, Lord, that it's only you who can dictate our decisions. You gave us free will, O God, but it comes with a cost. Let us all now examine ourselves, O God, and see if the decisions that we are making is worthy of your. We thank you and we praise you, O God, in Jesus' name, amen.
for those of you who want to give, we have a PayPal or is it Cash App? So it's a square. You can give. It's on the bottom of the screen. Just click the link. Go to it. Give. We thank you. Y'all be blessed.